Let's just take a moment to invite the Holy Spirit in to this place. Let's all stand and get ready to worship Him. Let's just realize how good He is in our lives and everything He's done for us. There's so many times that I just, I can't even count the blessings that, that God has given me. And I'm grateful every day for what He's done in my life, for someone who's so undeserving. Deserving of it, Amen. he still loves us no matter what. Amen. And so I think that's a reason, a good reason for us to praise him this morning in this house.
God gave me this job. It's a recovery place. And let me tell you, the things I see on a daily base, basis, just people struggling with addiction, just bound by chains of just guilt and shame and sorrow and just they're helpless. They don't know what to do with their lives and they're just, they have nowhere to go. And it's a last resort for them. And some of those people, they depend on drugs and alcohol so much that their body literally has gotten to the point where it needs it. And uh, one guy one night, was uh, he, he couldn't sleep, and we have a nurse on, on call at night, and he was shaking real bad, real bad. And he's just like, man, I need to go see the nurse. I need to go see the nurse. And, you know, I just felt so bad for him, and he started locking up and couldn't move. So I literally had to pick him up, carry him to the nurse. I had to hand feed him his his medicine. And I said, I don't think this is working. So finally I looked at him and I said, do you want me to pray for you? And he said, man, I would love that. And he was just shaking and shaking and I laid my hands on him and I started praying for him in the name of Jesus. And I said, look, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you heal this man right now of everything that he's going through right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that you just take this addiction away from him. That he can walk in your life, Lord. That he can give his life to you, Lord. And as I was praying this prayer, the nurse came over and just grabbed his hand and started laying hands on him. And then all of a sudden, another worker came in and saw him and was just sitting there praying with us. And as soon as I got done praying, it was like the man looked at me and said, wow, I feel ten times better. Ten times better. And it was one of those moments where I just, I just, I bawled. I cried. I'm not going to lie. I cried. And I said, wow. And I said, man, I feel the Holy Spirit thick in this room right now. And the worker that came in, he said, I don't even believe in God. And I felt the Holy Spirit. So I'm telling you today, it doesn't matter what situation you're in right now. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter when it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here to tell you that our God is a great God. And he does heal. He does restore. His promises are true. He is the same yesterday as today. And he will never fail you no matter how many times you've been failed by man. God will never fail you. And he loves you no matter what. And he's right there by your side. So as we sing this song, I, I just ask that you guys remember that. And praise God. And Pour out to him for all the things that he's done in your life. And if there's anything that you need healing for, ask for healing right now. You guys want to come up to the front. That's why we have the front right here. As we sing the song, if you want to receive healing, if you have anything that you need prayer for, come up here and pray for it right now. And ask that God gives deliverance for you and your situation as we sing the song. You are here.
never stops working. He still loves us today. and 
It says, therefore, anyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the storms rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Isn't that a good scripture? That's what you promised. You build your house on the foundation, the rock. It will stand when everything else comes around you. Listen, storms and wind will come in every one of our lives. Anybody in here never have a storm in their life? Never have? A big wind in their life. I tell you what, you know, you say the, the, the wind comes and blows the sails crazy in your life. And the things that happen in life are not always good and positive. But guess what? When you built upon that rock, the solid rock, the foundation of God, it will stand. It says, but if you go and you, you go and you put your house upon a sand like foolish men do it says the rain came down the storms rose the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash listen i don't want to fall with a great crash do you i don't want to fall at all but listen when we build upon the right thing it will stand you know um we've traveled a lot around the world i've seen lots of houses Lots of different homes. I mean, I've, I haven't seen an igloo, but they have igloos in Baffin Island. They have igloos out there, and people live in them. Um, in, uh, then they have, what else do they have? They have yurts, which are tents, in Central Asia. They have cave homes. I just saw them in Spain. I just saw those homes built in actual rocks. And they have came home, homes, they have rondavels, which are little mud huts that they have in South Africa. They have all kinds of homes all over the world. And they all look different. But I'm telling you what, you can trust when you build upon a solid foundation that house will stand. You know, it's better to have a hut on a rock than a castle on the sand. Amen. Have you seen a sand castle built on the sand? What happens? It just crumbles and falls. When one little wave comes, it's gone. And so I want to encourage you today. And today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, every mom out there. Um, you know, as moms, we are the ones that sometimes have to make sure our house is built upon that rock. And dads, it's both of you. Building your homes upon the rock. And I just want to encourage you today that this, this can be done through Philippians. And I, I wanted to tell you in Philippians 4.4, 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything but prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, pray, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's how you build your house upon a rock. It's faith upon a rock. Amen. You build that and you trust God because winds and waves come. Pressures come. Temptations come. And you might feel like you're rattling and rolling in the storm. But guess what? If you will stand when you're standing on the rock, the solid rock of your foundation, which is Christ. Amen? So no matter what your house looks like, if it's built on a solid rock, it will stand. The rock of God's principles and God's promises never fail. We sang about it this morning. It will never fail. His word is true. It's tried. And we can trust him with his word. Amen. So I want to encourage you as a mom today, as a dad today, as a brother, as a sister, as an aunt and uncle, whatever you're going through, wherever you're at, it's the same for you as everybody else. You need to build your life upon the rock of our salvation. Amen. You know, this testimony that we shared this morning was awesome. Because it just shows you people go everywhere, try everything, do everything, and it crumbles. There today, you heard it, it crumbles. But when you go and you suddenly find what is truth, what is truth, and you build upon that truth, that solid rock, the promises of God, you have something to live for. Amen? And you have hope because he is our hope everlasting. Amen? So no matter what your house looks like, 
It can stand the winds and waves and the storm. Health, finances, marriage, your life as you walk through your jobs and your situations. God is faithful. And I can attest to that today, that he is a faithful, faithful God. Amen? Amen. So who can say God has met a need in your life? Financially, God has met a need in your life. Spiritually, God has met a need in your life. Financially, God has set you free and saved you. Amen? Amen. And he set your feet upon the solid rock. So this word is for you. Amen? Amen. And it is what you need to stand on. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I'm glad you're with us. We want to welcome you today. If you're a first-time guest, welcome. We're glad that you're with us. We have a card on here if you want to fill it out so you can just get a letter. And we thank you for coming and being with us today. Also, if you're online, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And we're glad that you are with us. We still um, we have a GOE class that is meeting still on Tuesday nights at 7. If you're interested in any of that, talk to Jack. I know they're kind of far into that, but he'll be glad to chat if you have any interest in joining up. This week we have book club coming up May 16th at 7 o'clock. If you would like to join us, come join us. It's a lot of fun. We're reading the book called Prophet by Frank Peretti, so it's a great book. If you haven't read the book, it doesn't matter. You can still join us, ladies. We don't mind. We just have good fun and fellowship and, and uh, a good time together. So put that on your calendar. Um, our six-week Bible study, The Awe of God, is continuing at 7 o'clock this Wednesday night. Come join us if you can. It doesn't matter if you've missed the other ones. Join in anyhow. We'll be serving some snacks at 6.45. And um, it is a great um, study so far, and we really are enjoying it. Also, mark your calendars for May 31st on Wednesday night. Not this Wednesday, but the 31st. We're going to be having the MIT guys here again speaking. And that week is going to be Luke Hackley. So put it on your calendar. That's going to be fun. And we would love to have you join us. All right. If um, you want to hand out offering on ropes, that'll be great. And right now, we're just going to um, show a Mother's Day video. If someone can let Miss Kristen know, does she know that's happening? Um, that will be great. And uh, we do want to honor all the moms here today, you know, and only not only the moms in the natural, but there's many moms that are in here that are spiritual moms, that have children, that they've raised spiritually. And I hope every woman in here is a spiritual mom to somebody. If there's anything that is needed in the world today, it is good mentoring. Amen? And um, we can be women that mentor women. And so don't ever feel like you're left out because you're not. We're all called to pour into people's lives. Amen? And... Um, I just, I love being able to do that. Um, I have a, another name. It's called Shmom, Shmom, and um, it's the S, Mom, and it means second mom. And I have that name too. I'm called Shmom by someone. And, you know, it's an honor because you, can, you know that you are pouring into people's lives. And um, I want to encourage ladies not to quit doing that, okay? Be that, because we're all called of God to, to pour into people's lives and to be a blessing. So let's go ahead and show our Mother's Day clip this morning, and then we will uh, be handing out some flowers to the moms here with the kids. And so thank you so much. Some call you Mama. Some call you Mommy. Some call you the most smartest. Some call you so funny. Some call you homework helper. Some call you hi, hi. Some call you their hero, and also their taxi driver. Some call you Nana, or Abuela, or Mima. 
Some call you mother. Please stop spoiling them all. Some call you a mentor. Some call you a friend. Some call you God's kindness for the mother they never had. Some call you from the beginning. Some call you much later. Some call you guardian or foster parent on paper. But paper never stopped you from showing up open-handed. You were no less the mother and the love God intended. Some call you joy. Some call you graceful. Some call you strength. Some call you faithful. Some call you constant. Some call you care. Some call you always. Some call you there. Some call you the greatest. Some call you the bomb. But I, I call you blessed. I call you mom. All right, now that you're all crying, <laughs> we want to say happy Mother's Day. I'm going to... They didn't follow me. I'm gonna grab our friends here. <laughs> Walked out by myself. Do not wanna sing a solo. Um, we wanted to honor all the moms today. We also wanna honor all the wonderful grandmothers and aunts and those who are mentors in folks' lives. You know, we know our God is a big God and he uses all kinds of women uh, to be a mentor and a help to folks. So y'all can play that song and we'll have, if you can't all stand up, the kids, all the ladies, we have some, a gift for you from the children. Not, not everybody, sorry, all the ladies. I love my mom, God upstairs as well. God bless you. Thank you, children. We love our children. Amen. Lord, our children be without their mothers. Lord, all of us be without our mothers. We need our mothers. Amen. Well, before I get started here, I want to have uh, Jack's got a announcement he wants to make. You're very proud of Jack. He says he's been very pro pro prolific in uh, getting some books out lately. And he's had a really precious here book for Mother's Day. It's appropriate to hear talk about this uh, for children. So let's hear more about what Jack's got. Hallelujah. I'm going to depart for just one second because <clears throat> after much thought and consideration, I realized that none of us would be here if we didn't have a mother. So be thankful to your mothers and enjoy them while they're here and make sure they, that you they know that they're loved. I got to the privilege of taking care of my mother for the last three years of her life. And I just want to honor her and just tell you a real quick story. <clears throat> my parents got divorced when I was in the fourth grade. And we had, there was four of us boys, and she refused to get remarried because she was afraid that the next husband may not take care of her boys correctly. 
And I just honor her for that because she did get married, but she waited until we were all grown. And he was not a good man. <laughs> so I'm grateful. Anyway, that's just a story that mothers sacrifice for us all the time. Um, <clears throat> I've written this book and I give honor uh, to God because this is my fourth book. When I was 27 years old is when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and I could hardly read, quite frankly. And now I've written four books. This is a children's book. So if you need a good, clean book for children, this is like four years to eight years old is, is, the, is the program. So uh, if you're interested in that, I, I'll be available and they're for sale if you need one. Amen. Blessings to everybody. Oh, yeah, you can get them on Amazon also or go to my website, Matthew2819ministries.org. Okay? Blessings. Where's, where's my brother? Oh. <laughs> uh, rapture. Huh? I'm still here. <clears throat> All right. Blessings. Thank you so much for that. It's just, and also there's some, some activities in the back of that book besides just the story. So it's going to be a really good thing to get a hold of and a good price as well. Um, we're having some birthdays happening this week that are important people. Uh, everybody's important here, amen. amen. In the Morales family, they have a daughter named Sophia. Now he is the Morales here. Let me see him. We're, there's all back in this area. They have brought their mother here from Rainier, all the way from Puerto Rico. And so little Sophia is having a birthday. She's turning, what, 10 or 11? 12. Oh, 12 years old now. As I prayed about her, I received First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7 through 8. It says, on that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Abasaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Amen. And I really just said, I was reading that, the Holy Spirit gave me that, that she's going to be um, using her <laughs> mouth more and more for friends that need Christ and telling them about all the things she's thankful for that God has done. Maybe in your family or life or school, whatever it may be, that she's going to be able to be a real thankful little girl that's going to bless others with her testimonies and what God's done doing in her and through her as well. So let's bless her with that. And then Adam, Iris, is Iris here? Yeah. Okay, Adam, she'll be watching her online. She has a granddaughter named Kennedy. And I was praying about her and I received Psalm chapter 10, verse 14 that says, but you have seen for you observe trouble and grief uh, to repay it by your hand. The helpless commit himself to you. You are the helper of those who need a father. And I, I, just, I sense that there's some things happening for Kennedy there. God's going to undertake for her. God's doing that even right now today. He's going to keep right on doing that more and more. And being uh, even a heavenly father for her in the place she may need that in her life, in this season of her life as well. Then we have Jose Gonzalez. Is Jose here today? Oh, God bless Jose. Let's give him a hand. Jose is one of our big helpers here who works outside and on the grounds here, but also works inside in many great ways. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 says, be, be rooted and grounded and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. I just sense it's going to be a great year for you to put down deeper and deeper roots. There'll be some discipleship happening here and there's going to be some real spiritual, just under the, under the surface things done. It's going to help you have like show up about a good foundation to build on for the future as well. Amen. So just receive that also. Anybody else having a birthday today or this week coming out? I might have missed some birthday folks your birthday is today no adam samuelson no adam okay let's make sure you get that down right adam uh sometime wednesday or thursday or so okay adam samuelson somebody else i might have missed as far as anniversaries go this is the anniversary week uh tomorrow for our daughter sarah and her husband nate number eight and then they got married 5 15 15. and so uh sarah's due in exactly one month from tomorrow to have her baby, so be praying for her. God gives her strength and grace for that child, the third baby. When doctors said she'd have no children, she's having the third one now Amen. in one month. And everything's working out fine thus far. We're believing God for a great delivery. Anybody else having an anniversary I might have missed? Some of our ushers go ahead and come to the front up here. Let's get us take some time to really think about these folks having birthdays. Let's pray blessings on them. You know, the Bible talks about in the Old Testament, especially how time and time again God told the Israelites to pray together blessings upon their nation and upon their cities because uh, god knew he would hear those prayers and answer those prayers so there's really power in corporate prayer so father we do thank and praise you today those that are having birthdays god today this week we say the blessings of god overtake them and pray god that the plan you have for their lives unfolds before them clearly uh, be a lamp to their feet a light to their path and we praise god they have protection provision but also, God, favor to do things to expand your kingdom yes. upon this earth. Yes. 
We bless, oh God, uh, Nathan and Sarah having an anniversary tomorrow. Bless their marriage covenant, Father God, the love they have for each other. May it grow stronger, deeper, and wider. Help them, God, be a godly example of a, of a good Christian, happy, joyful marriage that's healthy. And I praise you, God. We pray together that her baby is protected, Father God, this last month yes. before it's born. That all things go smoothly and peacefully. And by your spirit, God, intervene for them. We also bless the offering sown today. Let it be used, O oh God, for your glory. Right now, we together say we bless the city of Austin. We declare all the surrounding areas are blessed to receive ideas, creativity, inventions. And we pray, God, that you rebuke the devourer of thy namesake in our behalf. Let, let O oh God, and help debt to be broken off your people. Help us all be wise stewards of what you give to us. We give thanks and praise for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen. God bless you, ushers. Thank you. Helping us out here today. Thank you guys that are giving online as well. You folks that are watching online. This is called Tree of Life Church. And I am Mike Johnson. That's my wife, Cheryl, you saw earlier. We want to say thank you to James helping us out to lead worship. Greg went down to Mother's Day, I think in Houston. And we also had Jonathan here and Miriam helping us out. So God bless Jonathan and Miriam on the keyboard and vocals as well. They've been in our church since they were little, little bitty uh, children. And now they're world, world rulers, so we don't see them about as much as they travel the globe. But we appreciate you guys coming up with us out today. You've been a great blessing to us. If you have your Bibles, we're going to talk about today some lessons from Jesus' mother from uh, Matthew chapter 12 to start out with. And before I start in with this message here, we're going to have a little bit of um, Mother's Day humor. These things are good, good stories, good things to write down and tell uh, around the table later on to your own family. <clears throat> One thing says here, a mother said to her son, look at that kid over there, the way he's behaving. The son says back to the mother, maybe he's got good parents. <laughs> Isn't that great? Then the daughter, that was a son, here's a daughter. Now the daughter asks her mother, mom, what's it like having the greatest daughter in the world? Mom says, I don't know, ask your grandmother. <laughs> then the third one's here, little girl has got a black haired mother. And uh, notices there in the kitchen when she's making a the cake there, she's got a few white hairs that are coming out. She says, Mommy, why do you have some white hairs? She goes, well, every time you make me sad or unhappy and you make me cry, I get a white hair. The little girl thinks and says, well, Mommy, well, why does Grandma have white hairs all over her entire head? <laughs> the last one here. If, your mother, if you're a mother or a grandmother having a headache, my advice to you is take an aspirin. Read the back of the label that says, keep away from children. <laughs> All right, we'll catch that one as well. Now back to the Bible. We're talking here about lessons from Jesus' mother. I believe Jesus had a good sense of humor as well. I believe he sat down with the disciples. They had times of laughter, times of joy. I like that whole series we've been watching called The, the uh, Chosen, because it really shows, I think, a really accurate um, demonstration of who Jesus really is. He's not the sad, depressed, melancholy, skinny guy that looks like he's barely, uh, he's anorexic and can barely get by in life. He was a carpenter, he was strong, robust, and I believe he was a guy that had a lot of laughter and joy in his life on a daily basis, amen? <clears throat> the shortest verse in the entire Bible is Jesus wept. That's two words, that's the shortest in the Bible, that should tell you something. And so Christ did wipe, well, I weep, he did cry, but it wasn't most of the time. Most of the time he was out there doing things that caused joy and laughter and gladness upon the earth. So. You can imagine being the mother of Jesus and nothing inappropriate ever took place uh, in him or through him because he had no sin. But yet at the same time, there were some outrageous things that Jesus actually did because he was God in the flesh. He was God and man at the same time. And uh, Mary was not yet quite tuned in to the spirit herself, not understanding some things that Jesus said or did. But praise God, God chose the exact right woman to raise him. Because he knew in advance what Jesus would be, would be doing in the future. And he knew what Mary should respond like when those times of being outrageous took place in his life. We're going to look at three pictures here about Jesus, his interactions with his own mother, and things he said and, and thought about. When we asked this question this morning here, what is God saying to us today in these three pictures about the mother, the Mary, the, the Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ? I'm trying to get through dyslexia this morning. But it's, it's kicking in. So let's read now Matthew chapter 12. Let's start reading in verse 46 through 50. It says, while Jesus was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside. 
They asked him, seek to speak with him. Then one said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to one of them and told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward the disciples and said, here's my mother, here's my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, Jesus Christ is not trying to be disrespectful or being a smart aleck there. He's trying to always get folks to understand this is not all there is. There is a life to come in eternity for what I say will be made more clear and will be true to you as you live in a spiritual life and spiritual state in the life to come. This is kind of an outrageous response, though. Notice it does not say here, though, it does not say that Mary, his mother, became greatly offended and would not speak to him for one week. Time and time again, it says Mary would ponder things in her heart that Jesus said that seemed to be totally outrageous in his life. We can see in scriptures that even Jesus' family were at odds with him sometimes. His own brothers one time said, listen, your son, Jesus Christ, is out of his mind. Take control of him. He's acting crazy in the house. The brothers also did not believe him many times. They went around him during the healings and miracles and crucifixion. They did not believe he really was Christ, the Son of God. And praise God that as time goes by and Jesus Christ dies on the cross and is raised from the dead, they understand he really was who he says he was. And they became those who actually became apostles themselves, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in due time. It's hard to separate a child, though, from his mother in their heart. I found that mothers are those who will love their children unconditionally, no matter what their child is acting like or going through in their lives, good or bad or ugly, because God made mothers like that. And praise God, because mothers have great faith that what they see today may be bad, may not be the same way tomorrow. I know God's made mothers to be intercessors and be godly examples and be a blessing throughout our entire lives as those who have mothers which is all of us in this room today, especially godly mothers. A really tough saying that he also gave. He said, if you want to follow me, you need to hate your father and your mother and hate your family. Now, many folks think in the cult teach type realm, not cults will use this, this verse, to say, see there what the Bible says, when you join this group religiously, you must cut your family completely off. That's not what Christ was saying. I did research on the Greek language here and found that word hate in the Greek context. The word hate there does not mean hate like in a way that you do not like them and can't stand them. Luke chapter 14 verse 26 is where this verse comes from. It actually means love them less. It means postpone in love or esteem and it means to slight. What it means there is when you meet Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you must understand that now he is now first in your life. You must now postpone your family, mother, brother, sisters, and father being first in your life as far as love is concerned. Jesus Christ must take their place. But the good news is if you allow Jesus Christ to take the place of first in the love life of your heart, he will always cause your walk with your father, mother, and brothers to become better and not worse. Have you found that to be true? When Jesus Christ is first, when God is first, and the Holy Ghost is first, it makes you love your father and your mother and your brother even more than you loved them before. And everything becomes better in your relationships with them when God is first in your life. So it's saying there again, you must postpone them being first. Make me first. You make me first. I'll give you more than you had before they were first in your life. Here's three lessons now from Jesus' mother. Let's write these things down. Number one is this. For those that are going Going through a difficult season, God is saying, do not give up. Don't give up. How many folks realize that being a mom is tough? All the moms know that. Some dads do as well. Moms have it tough in many, many ways because uh, their work never ends. From the time they're up in the morning, the time they go to sleep at night, and in the middle of the night as well. Their work is never, ever totally done. They've also got a heart that wonders what's their children going through. What do their children need? What's going on I can do to help them out? In this story about Jesus Christ being born in a manger in Bethlehem, Mary's in a tough job herself. She travels 80 miles, nine months pregnant, all the way to Nazareth, going to Passover place where she has to go to get registered there with her husband. 
And they fought the crowds, they fought the camps, they went into a little stingy or a grungy little place at stake, a little manger there where animals are abused to feed and lay down and so forth. And now finally the Passover is gone. It's been a very tiring time for her. The baby's been born. And then uh, time, this is actually a story later on when Christ is actually now about 12 years old. And it says they're now going home. And the first night of going home with crowds, because in this culture, many times the kids would travel with their friends and the adults would travel with, with their friends. So it wasn't unusual not to see your son or daughter next to you for two or three days. They realized that Jesus, about 12 years old, was nowhere near them. They'd gone 25 miles away from the place they were at, and now all of a sudden they realize Jesus is lost and is not there. They go 25 miles now back to Jerusalem where they came from before. They finally find him. And it says here in Luke chapter 2, verse 46 to 50, these words come out. Now, so it was, after three days, they finally found Jesus in the temple. He was sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And so when they saw him, they were amazed. His mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. They were saying there, we were scared out of, out of our gourds. And he said back to them, why did you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. This is why Jesus Christ, the preteen, was now in a place where our preteens themselves are getting into a thing called independence. He had to be about his father's business. It's the age we find ourselves telling our children here again, don't you understand what I'm saying? I've got more experience than you've got. I've been around longer than you've been around. I know more than you know. They think that's all a bunch of, of hogwash, and their whole mindset gets more towards their peers, what their peers think, what their peers say, and what their idols are doing than what their mom and dad is telling them. The good news is Jesus Christ was not like this. And so God is telling us that are going through difficult seasons, don't give up during the difficult season. Cheryl and I have raised three children. We've gone through the teenage years, and praise God, we went through those teenage years not scot-free. There were some little bumps and bruises along the way, but for the most part, uh, as far as we know, our children made, through, made it through that, saved, loving Jesus Christ, still going to church and enjoying church and enjoying things about Christianity and growing in things of God as well, though there were some bumps along the way by some of them perhaps. I'm not going to give you names and details here. <laughs> I'll owe my kids money if I do. But our biggest advice is to pray specific prayers for your children. When your kids, especially reach the teenage years, I'm saying to you guys, we pray for our children every single day. God, open doors you want open to them. Shut down doors you want shut down. Give them, Lord God, right associations. Cut off what is evil and of the devil. Because I folks don't realize Satan himself has got an assignment for your kids. He wants your kids to meet rebellious kids and meet addict kids Amen. and meet kids that are ornery and mean and do mean things. Because there was associations will rub off on them, hopefully, and make them become like they are themselves. In fact, the Bible says in Colossians, it says, do not seek after corrupt uh, friends because they shall corrupt you in your life as well. In my teenage years, I realized again by going back there, it's only a snapshot of my life and, and your kids' lives. What they're acting like today in rebellious type ways, perhaps, may not define them 10 years from now. It's only a snapshot of what they're going through today. I've seen so many youth that go astray, but they come back to God full blast in their 20s, sometimes their 30s. Things turn around for the better. In my teenage years, when I was about 13 years old, I broke my leg in gym class. Uh, a young man got on my back during wrestling in gym, and I had my back, my knee, or my feet behind my back like this, and as he brought his weight down on my shoulders, it snapped my tibia, oh, wow. gave me a spiral <laughs> fracture, made an echo go off at the gymnasium. It sounded like a, a twig being broke. And um, so I got out of school for three weeks. I had a, a cast up to my hip. And so praise God for three weeks out of school. That was a, that was a good part about that. And the Christians were kind of fun for a while too. But um, the thing was, in my church, my reputation was to be kind of a rebel type kid. But I realized at this broken leg deal, my pastor thought I was worse than I was. Because when he came to the house in a house call with my cast on up to my hip, <clears throat> him and an elder came on the afternoon and a weekday. 
and he's praying for me, encouraging me, and all that kind of stuff about getting injured. Then he says, Michael, now be honest here. What's it like to smoke that marijuana? <laughs> I thought, I have never touched or smoked marijuana in my entire life. I did not realize that's how bad I was thought of in the church. This little kid's a little drug addict. This little kid smokes dope. He probably gets drunk and who knows what all he does. And so uh, praise God that I uh, just uh, had the maturity to tell a guy I never smoked marijuana in my life. Don't know what it's like. Oh, come on, Mike, you can tell me. But you couldn't even believe that. And so uh, nowadays, folks would be leaving a church like that real fast. But in those days, we had deeper roots and went down. And I forgave the guy and just kind of moved on. But I'm telling you guys, again, we get reputation sometimes by things we do that cause us to think one thing. Really, something else is going on behind the scenes. And the bottom line is never give up on your youth, on your sons or on your daughters. No matter what they're going through in life that's good or bad or ugly, it's only a snapshot of something down in the future as well. I know what God did in my life. I know what God can do in your children's lives as well. I'm saying do not give up on them. It may be a difficult season for you. It goes on here and says in verse 51, 52 of Luke chapter 2, that after these parents got upset at Jesus for going out there for three days, being lost, not telling them what he's doing, notice what it says next of all. Then Jesus went down with them, came to Nazareth, and was subject to them. But his mother kept treasure of the memory of all these things in her heart. And Jesus Christ increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. So even Christ, though he got them upset, the Bible says he became subject to them and said, I won't do that again, Mom. Won't do it again, Dad. I'm sorry. That's the last time that'll happen. And the Bible says he grew and increased because he was under subjection to his own parents. Our children realize that the Bible is very clear. It tells us if we'll honor our parents and obey them, we will increase in the land. Amen. God will bless us. God will breathe on us. There'll be a blessing come on us by honoring and obeying what our parents say for the most part. This should give us hope to not give up. There are better days ahead. Number two is this. For those going through a great season, a good, a good season with your children or grandchildren, stay a while. Don't be quick to take and forget and rush through those years. We can sometimes be so preoccupied by the little nuisances, we become unaware of the great things happening in our children's lives. I'm telling you guys, don't focus on the sinky diapers and losing sleep at night by crying babies or the demands for food or, the, or getting sick and needing medicine and doctors and all those negative things about babies, little children there. They're all there. But I'm saying try to focus on the good things in those little babies' lives, your children, because they grow up so fast. And the season of life of being a little bitty baby or a child or a preschooler is going to go away very, very quick. I'm saying take advantage of the times that are good in between you and your children in their lives. Amen. Enjoy the first time your child says dada or mama when the first tooth comes through, when they learn the alphabet for the first time, when they take their first step, when they become potty trained, when they show expressions of gratitude and say thank you for the first time to their mother or their father. Remember our own kids, we took them to Chuck E. Cheese and they were only about two or three years old. They got done being there and said, thank you, mommy. I love Chuck E. Cheese so much. And so this showed a little expression there of gratitude. Those things are memories to hang on to and think about those things, not the bad things and all the challenges there about being a parent in your life. Also celebrate and cherish all the good memories God gives you with your grandchildren and your children because those years will go by very, very fast. I heard it said that from age 12 to age 30, nothing is said about Jesus Christ or as theologians are concerned. We don't know what Christ did for those, those uh, about 18 years, age 12 to age 30. But then at age 30, he comes out because doing his first miracle, the wedding of Cana. My advice for those people who are going to go through weddings for your kids in the future is realize weddings are mainly about the, the bride and taking care of the bride's mother. So when, when weddings take place in your guys' futures, perhaps, focus on the bride and focus on that bride's mother because she is under stress and she needs your help and she needs your support. Amen. The, the husbands are nervous. They just want to get the thing over with and go. And I'm saying they do like weddings perhaps themselves, but, but those, those brides love those weddings. They've been looking forward to that day for 
for years and years. Make it as nice as you can and a good day of memories as well. John chapter 2, verse 4, Jesus said to her, Mary, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? Because my hour has not yet come. This talks about the water being turned into wine, where Mary comes to Jesus and says, look, the wine's gone. The guests are going to get mad. They're going to get angry. Call these guys cheap skates or whatever. And so what can you do to help this wedding party and help this bride and help this groom out? And Jesus Christ says back to her, woman, why does this concern me? But I don't really think he said that in a kind of smart, L.A., angry way. He kind of testing her to think, do you really know who I am? I think the way that Jesus talked to his mother, Mary perceived in her mind, my son loves me and wants to do something great, but he's testing me to see, is there faith that I can do it? What's Mary say back? Verse 5, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says, you do it. You see, she got that look. She got that perception. She knew her, the faith of her own son, who he was. And he says, I see my son, what he's thinking, what he wants to do. And I'm saying, whatever he says, do, you do it. So Jesus Christ, of course, says, fill up all those pots with water, turns it into wine, and the whole day is saved that day. Somebody said, there's a time when every boy and girl must stand up and tell their mother, I'm an adult and I can decide. That age normally comes around age 45. <laughs> Amen. God wants it to shrink down just a little bit better in your life as well. I was listening to um, Louis Gigliano, who we had a series by him six or seven, eight months ago, on um, his Air One Christian radio station, as I was driving around yesterday a bit. He made a little statement there that was very, very wise about the, the, uh, the um, seasons in a child's life. He said, from age one to age five is a season called discipline. We focus on teaching our children, yes, no, obey, don't obey, disobey, and they learn discipline very much from age one to age five. God wired them like that. From age five to age 10 and age 12 is a learning season. It's time to soak up and learn how to spell about math, reading, writing, the world, geography, science, all these learning things start taking place in their lives. So it's time to take and focus on your child learning about cars, about money, about the economy a bit, about politics a bit, about the government a bit. It's time to learn. From age 12 to age 18 is a time for guidance. They're trying to find their place in the world. What I want to become and do in life. And so it's time to be praying with them and guiding them, finding what their bent is in life. What are they made to be? Not what do you, what do you want them to be? What do you want? What does God want? What did God make your son or daughter to be? Find out the way, the bent that God made them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, the bent. And they will not depart from that if you find the right bent. I've seen so many parents want their kids to be what they want them to be. And they're not made to be that. And they blow up, they explode, they, they revolt, they rebel. Because they weren't made to be what their parents wanted them to be. Let your child be who God wants them to be. Discover that and train them in that. In Jesus' name. And then from age 18 till death, they should become your friend. Your child should be now a person who becomes a friend for life in your life. And our best friends become our sons and become our daughters. And no longer do they need us to make them learn all these things and be disciplined all the time and go through guidance all the time. Those things may be there for a little small ways, but for the most part, they should become our friends. And God will help us have great friends with them vacations, memories, and so forth. Dr. Phil was in a program also last week I saw for about 10 minutes. Dr. Phil said a very, very profound thing where he says, we got to realize we are not raising children. We are raising adults. Yes. You are raising adults. Your kid may be four or five years old. What you're putting into your kid's life at four and five affects them at age 30, 35, and 40. Amen. 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 We are raising adults. Remind yourself of that when you get around your grandkids and your kids. <coughs> we need to pour some good things in them. Amen. He said this because he was so shocked by the riots and rebellion we're seeing in Chicago and New York and the streets of San Francisco where folks are robbing Walgreens and taking and plundering targets and so forth, stores. 
and looting and robbing and so forth because he said the question that they had was where are their parents where's these kids parents at why are they letting them do this in the streets of america there's a problem in our nation we need the father's hearts turned back to the children lest god comes and we find a curse gets put upon our country amen malachi says that the hearts of fathers being turned back to their children last of all here Let's read John chapter 2, verse 12 first. After this says, he went down there again. His mothers, brothers, and disciples, they did not stay there very many days, but it says they did not also move very fast. They stayed there for a few days. It means that Mary took time to ponder and celebrate time with her son in this era. Number three, last of all, is this. For those going through heartbreak, a heartbreak season, realize that God is your healer. It should say on the screen here, God is your healer. I had the wrong words there to begin with. But many of those are going through heartbreak from their, from their kids, from their own grandkids. And God, God will heal the brokenhearted by his grace and by his spirit. Amen. Mary at the cross is now beholding the baby she once held. Bleeding, suffering, shamed, possibly totally naked. He's had all kinds of wounds upon his body, been spit upon, been called names, been cursed. He's had a murderer's death happening in his life right now. And I'm sure that Mary was there in tears, thinking about the memories of her son who healed people, cast out devils, yeah. fed people by the thousands, did so many good things, his three and a half years of ministry. And mankind pays him back by crucifying him. The worst death you can go through. Reviling him, shaming him, Amen. embarrassing him, causing pain to be upon his body. And Mary's there watching the son she held in her arms and loved so much in her heart. All of us that are here today realize we know this. No parent wants to outlive their children. They all want to die before their kids die. Amen. Amen. Probably about the worst thing you ever go through in life is losing a child before you die. And here's Mary going through that herself. She lost her husband. Joseph's already dead. And now her own son, Jesus Christ, is dying on the cross. Her heart has been broken. There may be some here today whose heart also is broken. But again, God in his grace and mercy can heal those hearts and bring strength back into you once again. Some of you that are here might have gone through a thing called infertility. You might have had a miscarriage. You might have had friends betray you this past 12 months. You might have gone through infidelity in your marriage. There are going to be hurtful wounds, hurtful bruises by people that have done things and said things to you that are still hurting today. Even maybe you lost a child yourself this past 12 months. Those that are watching online, those that are here live, God sees your pain. God knows your grief. God saw what his own son, Jesus Christ, went through. Even God's heart was broken for his son, Jesus, when he died upon the cross. He turned his back upon sin only for a moment. But praise God that God did not destroy the world when his son died on the cross. But Jesus Christ said those words, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. Jesus and God saw those words in his own son's heart, mouth and said, if you ask me to forgive them, I must forgive them. And I do forgive them. And praise God, those words were spoken that day. John chapter 19, verse 25 and 27, it says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved was John, the beloved, standing by her as well, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son, pointing to John. Then he said to the disciple John, behold your mother. From that hour, that disciple took her to his own home as his mother. Here's Jesus suffering, dying on a cross, but still caring about the needs of people down there on the ground and making sure his own mother is cared for by John the Beloved. You see, what he chose John because John's the one who knew, uh, would rest upon the very breast and chest of Jesus. He knew that John had compassion. John had mercy. John loved closeness. And John knew how to love and care for his mother like nobody else could. Jesus knew that. I believe Christ even chose him for partly because of that reason as well. Jesus knows he's got a better day coming. He knows there'll be prisoners released from hell. He knows he's going to see captives go to heaven. 
He knows his blood will wash sins away to billions of people. He knows what he does on the cross shall be rewarded by God openly. That death and hell and the grave shall be conquered by his sacrifice that day. And for the joy set before him, the Bible says Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame. But Jesus endured the cross. And I think the mother, Mary, being there as well, helped him out to have some strength that day. Because he, he drew strength not just from the father, but I think also his own earthly mother released love to him, compassion as well. That helped the son, Jesus Christ, out in that hour. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. It says, the, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And he saves such as have a contrite spirit. All that God's asking us to do is call upon his name. Say, Lord God, I admit I am broken. I need your help. I need your healing power. I need your love. I need your strength. I am a brokenhearted individual. God hears that prayer because he's near to contrite people. Some folks are saying if God is so close, then why could God not help me not go through these bitter circumstances I'm going through? Well, the truth is, maybe God delivered you of what could have been worse circumstances than you went through. Amen. God saw you in your bad circumstances, and God pulled you out of that. You could have gone through far worse than that had God not showed up and been Savior of your life. Let God heal those broken hearts. Realize again what your kids are doing right now that may, that may break your heart is only a snapshot of what may take place in a better way down the road. By faith in Jesus' name. Well, have Jonathan come back to the platform here to help me out. If you do it, put it on the keyboard. Let's read Psalms chapter 68 and 6 in closing where it says, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. Mary would have been a lonely person after Christ died upon the cross. But, but Jesus Christ spoke, speaks those words himself. I'm going to put you in a family. And make sure you're not going to be lonely, but be cared for all the days of your life. By my grace, by my power, and by my spirit. While our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. For privacy's sake only. I'm going to repeat these three pictures here again. And ask us all to ask ourselves this question. Where am I at today in my heart, my life as a mother, as a grandmother? Which picture describes me the best? Am I going through a difficult season? If I am, God says, do not give up. Am I going through a rejoicing season? Then God says, stay there a while. Don't be so fast to get out. Am I going through a heartbreak season? Realize that God heals the brokenhearted and sets captives free. Some of you that are here today have never had a child. You may be married or not married. You're going through heartbreak, perhaps. This is why I'm perhaps you that as well. God sees you. God knows about you. And God is going to give you grace. Whatever season you're going through in life. Father, I pray this morning, those mothers that are here, those grandmothers, God, that are here as well, that you bless them, Lord, this year ahead. To know the seasons, God, their children and grandchildren are going through. Is it time, God, for discipline? Is it time for learning? Is it time for guidance? Is it time to be a friend and cut the cord? And let my son or daughter be an adult in Jesus' name. Father, I pray God help us discern the seasons and times that our children are in and that we're in as well. Father, also for America, for our nation. God, our nation's broken. Our nation's going through a tremendous crisis of lack of fathers. And sometimes even mothers that are sometimes distant and dysfunctional, not knowing any better. We pray God have mercy upon our children in our schools, in our universities, oh God. Help us, Lord God, see godly examples, godly mothers, godly fathers being raised up in this hour, in this season. To bring forth, God, biblical instruction, the love of God, the plans of God being manifest for our children. Father, I pray for those that are going through a season right now where everything's smooth sailing. There's no problems, no rebellion, no bad times are happening. Help us, God, enjoy these times. Help us, God, take pictures and record things and have good, fond memories to fall back on for the future. But, oh, God, those that are going through a heartbreak time where their children have rebelled, their kids have been rebellious in the house, they've said things to hurt their mothers, hurt their fathers, hurt their grandparents. 
Help us, God, be like Jesus Christ was and says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Help us, God, release forgiveness to them. Let us, oh God, put those children in your hands, knowing we cannot change them by ourselves. We need your help. We pray, God, that you show mothers here what to pray for their children. Grandmothers, what to pray for their grandchildren. Give us, oh God, things in specific to pray about. Let there be divine wisdom, God, imparted to us. Father, we bless, oh God, our children as well. That they, oh God, would have a conviction come in their hearts to honor and love their, their mothers and their grandmothers and their parents. And show respect and show honor where honor is due. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise you, God. Thank you. Let's all stand to our feet. I'm going to have our prayer partners go ahead and come to the front now. We're going to dismiss in a moment. We're going to make sure you guys, again, this year, you're, you're going to beat the Methodists to the restaurants. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. I want you guys to have a great time with your family and your friends as well. And your children. I really, really feel strong that God wants us to be a church that prays not just for us. Let's pray for our city, our nation. Amen. Our nation is going through a tremendous crisis. And it needs to have a, a, a wake-up call in parenting, in responsibility, in what God's <coughs> word says about children, families, mothers, fathers, and their role in life. I encourage you mothers that are out there, read what you can. Many great books are out there on the internet you can pick up about parenting in, in God's way, the Bible way as well. But at the same time, don't ever beat yourself over the head what could have been, what you did not do. All of us make mistakes. All of us us come short in many ways in parenting. There's things that Cheryl and I would like to go back and do perhaps a little bit different in some ways perhaps in our life. You can't go back and do that, but you can say, God, you're the one that takes and restores what the enemy has eaten. You pay back everything that canker worm, the palmer worm, has taken from us. And I'm praying that God would help you to know that as well. Don't beat yourself over the head. What you did not do or whatever in the past, the past is the past is water under the bridge. God pays back what the enemy has stolen. Amen? Even time. Even time. So I'm going to ask you guys that are here, if you don't want to be prayed with by somebody for a healing in your life, a relational thing may be there, a financial thing may be there as well for prayer. Maybe you want to pray for somebody not here today that needs prayer. Take some time to get with one of these uh, prayer partners. Let's pray a prayer of agreement because God's word tells us where we were one or two come together two or three come together in my name agreeing on any one thing it shall be done in heaven there's there's power in the prayer of agreement let's pray this week also for Andrew Cortez this guy's gone through a real battle in his own body there's been some victories take place last week we're still battling some things in his own heart and his kidneys so think about Andrew this week. Let's make it a matter to pray for him by God's Spirit. Did you have something back here as well? Yes. Yeah, this morning, yes, I heard about them. I went to the ER. So be praying for him that he gets better, he gets stronger, and God will bless him. Um, anything else going on here? There he is again. There's cookies back in this foyer here. There's a picture place for photographs as well. God bless you, mothers. God bless you, grandmothers. We love you. We appreciate you. We could not be here without you. We need you guys to be mentors, examples. And you got, we have some tremendous mothers in this place. We have some great grandmothers, good great grandmothers in this place that we love so much. Keep on doing the good work. God sees what you do. You'll be blessed for that. Amen. Let's go ahead and get our brother Sonny. Sonny to get the microphone here. And he's going to dismiss us in prayer this morning. And we'll see you guys back here Wednesday night. Is Night number three for the awe of God by John Bevere. You'll enjoy that teaching. We're serving pizza this coming Wednesday night. And all kinds of other things on the side that folks bring in that are healthier than pizza. And some not as healthy. But you're going to love all of it, okay? Good fellowship. It's going to be a good teaching. Have a great Mother's Day. We'll see you folks at hope in a few days as well. God bless you. Uh, it's Sunday. Dismiss us. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for such a wonderful service of these days, O oh Lord. We thank you for your servant you have used mightily. Father, we pray that you should refer him the mother, oh Lord. Father, we thank you for all our mothers, Lord, our King of glory. We pray that you should bless them. 
teach them, oh Lord, on how to take care of, that, of us, oh Lord. Father, we give you time, we give you honor, because you are a great God. Father, as we go to the King of Glory, lead us safely, oh Lord, that next, oh Lord, we go to find our way here in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.